everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm Ben Woodthorpe. I'm here to uh, talk to you a little bit today about pivot tables. Thank you very much for all of you giving me some of your time today. So a couple of things before we start. I'm going to sort of talk you through um, a little bit of housekeeping for how the webinar is going to run. And we'll talk about content and then we'll jump straight into it and I'll show you some practical examples. So first thing, um, obviously you can't talk to me, uh, but you can ask questions towards, I think it's the top right or the top left hand corner ish of your screen. Uh, you'll have a button which says Q and A on it. And when you click onto that, what it does, it'll pop almost like a chat window up. So you can type your questions into there. Now, I'm gonna try and keep this as best I can to 30 minutes, and just to make you aware right now, I think we've got 60 people in the session, so if I get fired with lots of questions, I'll try my best to answer all of them, but obviously some of them I might have to group up and answer after the session via email, but you know, do feel free to ask the question. Also, don't wait till the end of the session to ask the question. Feel free to pop it in that chat window, uh, the Q&A button at the top and they stack up at my end and at, at reasonable points during the session I'll, I'll try my best to, to sort of go through it. And um, also don't worry um, about making too many notes. I, I'd suggest you, you just watch what I'm going through and take it in as we're going because I will send you a cheat sheet. So it's just sort of like a, a one page uh, wonder in word uh, going through a few little key points that I'm going to talk to you about. So I will send you a little bit of documentation after. And I will also send you a recording of this session as well. Um, okay, so we, we are, just to make you aware, we are recording this session uh, and it will go onto our blog and also our YouTube channel as well for you to watch after the session. And just to make you aware, that also goes for if you ask me a question, Obviously, I'm going to be talking about that question on this recording. So try and keep your questions fairly generic. And, and do be aware, any question you put in, all the other participants will be able to see that question. So, you know, again, don't put any, you know, personal details in there. Like, you know, phone numbers are a bad thing to put on the question, as an example. Right, so there's the, the boring bits. Uh, let's, let's have a talk about what I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to talk about putting a pivot table together. And I'm going to show you a practical way... Uh, that makes sense to me uh, of how to understand what a pivot table is and what it does. And it's really about how you drag things around to make the pivot table you want. Uh, and we'll do that with like color coding and I'll sort of explain a few things around that. Uh, we'll also look at how we change the maths uh, within, Excel, uh, within Excel, within a pivot table. So we can do different kinds of uh, calculations uh, within the pivot table. And I'll also show you a little bit around filters uh, within a pivot table. And, and this is kind of where I'm probably going to show you a few things that aren't so obvious. Now, it's, it's not so much filtering, but we can also use uh, filters to split information apart. And we can do some really quite nice should we say almost like dashboard things with a pivot table? Now, while I've got your attention, I have to be very shameless and I'm gonna just do a quick advert. If you like what you see, we can do this kind of training session bespoke for your company for up to 100 people per, per session with custom content. You know, you tell us what you wanna cover and we can cover it on a set date and a set time. We also do on-site training where we turn up with a set of laptops and we can deliver a bespoke brief for up to eight people, very interactive, and you know we can travel nationwide to do that. And we can do this for all of these applications, you know, the whole office suite. So Excel, Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, SharePoint, Power BI, pretty much you name it within uh, the Microsoft Office suite, we can, uh, you know, we can help you. And all of the courses we do, you get post-course support and notes, et cetera. Right, that's the plug over. Um, our, our apologies, I just thought, well, I've got, yeah, I'll mention it. Got to be cheeky and get that in there. But let's actually have a little bit of a look at uh, pivot tables. <clears throat> now, first thing I want to show you is I'm going to show you what a pivot table is and what a pivot table does. And then we'll backtrack and look at how we get to that and what the data needs to be. So just in case no one, uh, you know, people in this session don't know what a pivot table is, I just want to make you aware so you know what the crack is before I start talking about how you do it. So long story short, a pivot table is a way of getting a big detailed list, which is could be transactional or, you know, could be a list of whatever, sales, 
you know, employees in a company or whatever it is. And it allows you to take that list and turn it into a summary whereby we can get some information out of it. Now, if we see here, this is the original list. I've got one, two, three, four headings, region, quarter, product, and sales. This is a pivot table. Don't worry too much about what I'm doing on the right because I will go back and explain this. Just watch this area on the left. If you said to me, I would want to know how much money has been sold, how much money's worth of product has been sold for any given product in that list, can you see there is that report? So look, anise seeds, that's the total sales value. Basil leaf, cassia, that's the total sales value. So if I go back to my original list, can you see anise seed is mentioned many times in this list? So in effect, what a pivot table does, it gets a detailed list and it allows you to squash it into a summary really, really quick. But here we go, this is, this is the cool thing about a pivot table. I don't want to buy product, I'd like to see it by region. Can you see that is now a breakdown per region? I don't want to see it by region, I'd like to see it by quarter. Can you see that is now a breakdown by the quarter? And you know, we can go off the hook crazy now. We could be uh, product, quarter. Can you see there's the products down the left? We've got the quarters on the top. We've got like a matrix breakdown of, you know, what each product in each quarter is. And we've also got, can you see subtotals for the line, subtotals for the column. And if we're really feeling uh, pretty mad with this, I can factor in more stuff. So can you see now I've got the region? So this is product split down by the region. So look, long story short, and we're gonna go back and I'm gonna show you how I did this and what it means and how it works. Uh, this is turning a list into a summary report, but really, really quickly and very ad hoc, very, very flexibly. So let, let's go back a step and talk about the source data because this is really, really important thing to understand about pivot tables. First thing you need to be aware of with your source data, it needs to be a vertical list. So headings at the top, data going down below. So if your list is horizontal, you need to flip the list around. Uh, so it does need to be a vertical list. The other thing that is very, very important to a pivot table is, if you've got any blank column headers, you need to make sure there's something in that column. So can you see here product, and then there's a gap just here, that just will not fly with a pivot table. Even if you type the word dummy in that box, you just need to make sure that there's something in that box, okay? But obviously I'll, I'll just knock this back so it still says uh, what I did before, so sales. Uh, the other thing, and this is actually the same problem, merged column headers. So if I merge that column there, can you see that looks like both of those columns are called product? Unfortunately they're not. If I remove the merging, that is one column called product and that column there is blank. So we're back to the, the same kind of problem we had before. Every column header needs to have um, you know, a piece of text in it at the top. And the reason for that is, the, when I go to show you the pivot table in a minute and what we're looking at before, when I dragged things around the screen, it's actually the headings of the list that I'm dragging. So how we do the pivot table. First thing we do, we highlight the list that we want to analyze, okay? Now, a really, really quick way of highlighting a big list, rather than having to use your mouse to drag, is to click anywhere inside the list, and then we press Control and the letter A on the keyboard just there. Now, incidentally, just to advertise something else, on our blog, which we'll send you a link to, there is a recording of a webinar just about keyboard shortcuts. So if you like the look of that kind of thing for the keyboard shortcut, there is a video about that you can watch whenever you want. But look, once I've selected that list, what I then do is I go to insert at the top, and then I go to this one here called pivot table. Now it pops this screen up. Now personally, I am properly lazy. I just click okay because the defaults are my preference. But just to give you an idea of what these mean, uh, select a table or range, which is the default, is grabbing the list that you've highlighted over. Or choose an external data source. This gives you the ability to click on choose connection, and if it's been set up, you will have 
uh, potentially an item in there for your CRM system or maybe your order processing system or you know whatever it might well be as an option which means by using choose an external data source if it's been set up you can pull your data straight from a system rather than having to rely on Excel extracts but I'm going to leave it as that and then this bit down here is where do you want to plant the pivot table so I want to put it in a new worksheet because I like to keep my original data separate from my report but you know Different strokes for different folks. We go for external worksheet, uh, sorry, existing worksheet. We could click here and that's where it would plonk it. But look, aside from my waffling, all I've done is highlighted this list. I go to insert, click pivot table. And personally, I just click OK to this. Grab the list I'm in, plonk the pivot table in a new worksheet. Click OK, bish, bosh, bosh. There is my pivot table. And can you see, as it says on that screen before, it's created a new tab away from the original data called sheet two. There's my pivot table. Now, this section here on the right is how you're going to build your pivot table. And one thing to be aware of, if I click away from it, can you see it disappears? So if ever that set of boxes disappear, just click back on the pivot table and it will reappear. What I'm going to do now uh, is I'm just going to do a little bit of color coding on the screen because I want to explain to you how those boxes work for that pivot table. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of typing here. Oh, if I could, apologies for the, the poor spelling, bear with me one second. Label, uh, let's put in here data slash maths. Okay, so if you look at this very crude set of color coding I've done, um, imagine this is your report. And this is very, very sort of rough idea of what I would think of a report. Usually quite a lot of reports would have a section at the top where you would put some kind of descriptive label. So this month, this product, this region. Um, down the left, we'd probably have another set of descriptive data. So again, this product, this month, this region. And then in the middle, we'd probably have some kind of hard and fast facts. You know, the total of the sales. Uh, what were the number of converted leads? How many failures on the production line? Or how many, you know, what the efficiency was for this, that, and the other? Or intake to a course, whatever it might well be. So top section and left is all about descriptive stuff. And the middle is really where we're going to put the grunt work, the maths, the figures of what we want to analyze. Now, keep that picture in mind and look down at these boxes. Now, I want you in your, in your head to ignore the one called filters and concentrate on column, value, row. So imagine green is the column, orange, this middle bit, is the values, and then this yellow bit on the left is the rows. So can you see it's kind of laid out? If we, if we look at it, ignoring the filters, it's laid out in a similar way to how a very high-level report would be. Now, the idea of this is, these are your headings from your list, so region, quarter, product, and sales. And one thing I forgot to mention is I'll send you this example file as well so you can have a go of it as well after. Um, but if you had a bigger list, you'd have different headings in there, more stuff to play around with. But the idea of this is, if you click and hold and drag to one of these boxes, can you see I get a little, almost like green line? If I let go, if I let go in the rows, it's going to fill the pivot table down the left hand side with all of the um, you know the products or the region so it's going to fill this left side or if I drop it in the column it's going to fill the top now what I'm going to do I'm going to get rid of this color coding and I'll show you what I mean so if I grab product and drop it into the row can you see I get a list of all of the products going down the left hand side um, of my imaginary pivot table at the moment if I move product to the column can you see it puts the product along the top so that's the position stuff now if I then grab sales and drop it into the middle, and if you remember I said to you the middle bit, that's really for your figures, isn't it? So think of the middle as being maths. So values is maths, row and column. This is really text, descriptive stuff. But I've dropped my sales into there. Can you see values? It's now given me each product with the total sales for each one of those products going down there. And again, look, if I move product up to column, can you see it literally just changes the position of where product is. So this is just like going to Subway and having like lettuce or gherkin. It's, it's your preference, you know, where you 
put that label is entirely up to you for the purpose you want to go for. But then going a bit further on, if I were to grab quarter and plonk it into the columns, can you see that then subdivides along the top by quarter in addition to the product? So you've got two things really at play with these boxes. You've got the position, and if I put something there, it will go down the left-hand side. And I'll do, see if I can do a bit of color coding on this. Can you see that's the yellow bit? If I do along there, that would be, I think I did that as being green, didn't I? And then if I go into there, that would be, can you see the orange bit? So whatever goes in there is, you know, what I've put in the values, whatever I put in the columns goes along the top, whatever I put in the row appears down the left-hand side. So that's position. Now the second factor to think of, and I've kind of mentioned this very, very quickly as I've been going through stuff with you, is really very much a rule of thumb. Think of it as being numbers in the values and text in the row or columns. It's very much a rule of thumb. Doesn't always um, work out to be the case for every single situation. But the reason why I say that is values is maths and it's going to try and add the number up or average or count or min or max it. And we're going to look at the maths in a minute. And row and column, they are uh, what's called a group by. And this is going to give you one of every um, variation of text. So... For instance, if someone had spelled anise seeds five different ways, I would have ended up with, when I put product into row, five different lines for anise seeds. So number in the middle, maths in the middle, text, labels in the row and column. Very, very rough gist, but that, that is kind of how it makes sense to me. Now, beyond that, let's, let's have a little bit of a look at the maths. And, and really, to be honest, want to show you the maths there's loads more pivot table to do but this is kind of the guts of a pivot table really and, and everything that comes after it is kind of like fluff it's nice to have shall we say uh, but if i go to the values the default that you get when you drag a number column into the values is it will come up saying sum of sales provided everything in that column in the source data is a number if you've got any kind of issues with your data where there's some gaps or maybe some text or something like that, it will come up saying count of sales. So you have to kind of watch out for what this says because that can change totally what you're getting from your pivot table. Uh, but if I uh, go along here, I'm going to pop this arrow down just on where it says sum of sales. Click on there. And can you see it comes up saying value field settings? So I'm going to click onto that bad boy and it will pop this up. Now, there's two tabs, and I'll show you both of these, but this first one, this is kind of like the um, starting point math. So we've got sum, that's going to add everything up. So if I leave it as sum, obviously, anise seeds in quarter one, that is the total of all of the sales for anise seeds quarter one. If I change that to count and then click OK, you'll, you'll notice the number changes. Now, because this is dummy data, there's five of each, but... Uh, what this is saying to you now is for anise seeds in quarter one, there is in actual fact five lines in that original list that are anise seeds in quarter one. So it's count of how many rows there are. Uh, pop the arrow down again, value field settings, average. So, you know, mean average. So total then divided by how many there are in that particular group. Uh, look, there's loads more. Max, highest number, min, lowest number. Uh, you, you can do a product where it multiplies everything in the group. You can count only numbers. If you're better at maths than I am, standard deviation and variation. I unfortunately discovered going out when it came to statistics, so missed that. Uh, but if you're better with uh, stats, uh, that can be quite useful. But can you see very, very quickly and easily, we can change um, the maths um, with, your, with your pivot table very, very easily. But... There's a bit of a Brucey bonus with this in the sense that, and this is one of the things that even if you're using pivot tables, is very easily missed. And, and also, before I say the next thing, I've not seen any questions. So, you know, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to just tap them away and I will pick them up in a little bit. Uh, but here we go. Let's go for sum. Brucey bonus time. At the top, summarize values by. Next to that, we've got show values as. So what you've got to think of, and I'll be honest with you, I think Microsoft don't really label this very well and make it accessible to understand. But think of this as being, let's say it's a cake. This is the base of the cake. This is the topping of the cake. Summarize values by is the base maths the pivot table is going to perform for you. So if I select sum, 
it's going to add up all of those numbers for our niece seeds in quarter one. So that's the basis. If I then go to show values as, this is in effect the topping. Now at the moment, can you see it says no calculation? Now, if I pop this arrow down and instead of no calculation, pick percentage of grand total, this is the topping in the sense that what it's going to do, based on the fact that we are summing, it's going to work out that this is a certain percentage of that grand total. All of these numbers are a certain percentage of that grand total. So if I now click OK, can you see now it changes the maths to not display the total values, but now it's showing you the percentage splits. So in this case, Cassia in quarter two is 7.39% of the total sales. And look, this is the really cool thing about it. If I move my headings around, can you see it completely adjusts how it's doing those percentages based on what you drop into the rows and columns. Now, going back to this by popping down value field settings, if I now change that to be account and leave percentage of grand total selected and then click OK, that is now telling me the percentage of the transactional count each one of those items are. So I hope it makes sense, but you know, this is the base, this is the topping. So base calculation, topping works off the base calculation. And what this means is we've got one, two, three, four, five, seven or eight variations of um, summarized values by, and then each one of these we've then got, can you see all of these variations of calculations we can do? Now I'm gonna show you a couple more of these and then we'll have a little bit of a look at some filter stuff. But here we go, percentage of grand total was one example. If I go down and find one called difference from. Now difference from can be really good if you want to compare uh, sales for various things or periods or whatever it might well be. If I pick product as my base item, because as soon as you pick something which has difference, you've got to pick something that you want to compare to. So I'm gonna go for product. And then if I pick, uh, let's go for Cassia. So what this means when I click OK, the line for Cassia has gone blank. And looking at this, this looks like Cassia is the best performing product. Um, this is now telling me that in the case of Basil Leaf for quarter one, that's how much less Cassia, oh, sorry, Basil Leaf is performing uh, versus Cassia. If I now pop this arrow down again and go to value field settings, if I were to change that to count, it would change it to difference from transaction count, uh, difference from average, whatever you want to go for. If I go back to show values as, uh, I could change the basis, so chives. Can you see there? Some are up, some are down based on chives. Um, but there's a really little nifty trick with this. Uh, pop the arrow down, value field settings, show values as. If I made that quarter, now quarter is going along the top and it's a time period going left to right. If I pick quarter one, it's going to compare everyone to quarter one. But if I pick this nifty little one here called previous, now what this will then do, and this has got nothing to do with the time period, it's got to do with the fact that the labels go left to right. If I select previous on quarter, difference from, click OK, quarter one is blank. This is now showing me how much more quarter two is versus quarter one. This is now showing me how much, in this case, less quarter three is versus quarter two. How much more quarter four is versus quarter uh, three. So it's difference to the previous item to the left. And there's also, if we pop this one down, um, difference from next. So you could do next period, for instance. And I know I'm banging on here a bit. Let me show you one other example of something you can do. And, and again, look, it's taken me 20 minutes to get to this point to tell you but really, when you're having a go, what we're talking, 20, 30 seconds worth of effort and you've got this report. And normally this would be, uh, you know, calculations, copy and paste of data, let alone collating it into a summary. Uh, but here we go. Let's have a look at another example. Difference from, drag this down a little bit. And, and there are other ones as well versus what I'm showing you here. But if I go for running total in, I'm going to go for running total in quarter. Once I'm ready, click OK. Boom. This is now showing me quarter one's figure on its own. This is quarter one and two combined. This is quarter one, two, three combined. And this is quarter one, two, three, four combined. So this is a cumulative figure going through the year. 
So th these these little things where you got like difference from running total in, they tend to work in certain fits. So you know we we perhaps would not go for value field settings and go running total in product because that's giving you a running total going down those product lines. I mean I don't know you might do possibly, but it would it would make more sense to you know, do a running total in something which is a time period because obviously that makes more sense. So some of these things will let you do um, calculations that don't necessarily make a whole heap of sense. You've, just, you've got to kind of look at it, think about it, but, oh, mega good. I mean, it, it, it can save you so much time rather than you having to do stuff manually. Right, so that, that's a little bit on the maths. I'm just going to reset this. Oh, incidentally, what, sorry about this. One thing I forgot to mention. If you want to remove anything from a pivot table, we just click, drag, can you see, and just get rid of the item that we don't want to see. So if you do want to get rid of anything, we just drag it out, and then we can start again. I do apologize. I didn't mention that before. Uh, so look, last main thing I want to show you, uh, and we, we may run over the half an hour by a few minutes, um, but uh, let me show you the last thing, which is about filters. So... I've missed out this box at the top left deliberately to keep this nice and simple. I'll talk about that in a minute. But before I talk about that, you've got filters already on the pivot table. Downward pointing arrow there, pop the arrow down. I am not interested in seeing quarter four. Maybe they're projected figures, not actuals. Click OK. Can you see quarter four is removed? And you'll notice all of the grand totals automatically adjust. Now, that, that's a weird one. That's a horizontal filter. Nowhere else in Excel will you be able to horizontally filter data. This is the only place I'm aware of anyway. Um, here we go. Row labels. Untick what you do and don't want to see. Click OK. Can you see the list filters? Okay. And it, it actually brings that data up. So row and column filters filter the row and or the column, depending on what you want to go for. And they work just as normal filters would do. But watch this next one. Filters. If I grab region and plonk it into the filters box just here, what this now does, it gives me at the top another drop down box. And I tell you what, let me get that out. Let's, let's remove that. Keep your eyes peeled, roughly speaking, where I'm hovering my mouse around on line one. I'll drag region back into the filters box. Can you see it appears? So this is another filter. What you've got to think of is, um, and I'm going to sound like a five year old now, but these filters here, they're like the. Um, uh, baby bear filters I told you so I'm a five-year-old and this one here this is kind of like the mummy bear or daddy bear filter these are kind of like the overriding global filter that's going to apply to the entire pivot table so if I now pop region down and go for east and then click OK that is now filtered the entire pivot table only showing you just anyone who's in the east now if east had no figures for quarter three that column would disappear if east had no figures for Cassia that figure would disappear. You can also tick this box and select multiple items if you want and pick different items you want to go for. And then can you see it will filter on that basis. And, and that's really good. That's, that's pretty nifty. Um, personally, I like it, but it's a bit clunky because these buttons are a bit fiddly to get to. So two little tricks uh, that we can apply uh, with filters. And I've just seen there's a, a question coming. I'm just going to show you one more thing and then I'll come and answer that question in a moment, Heather. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to click into that. So we've got two things. We've got something called a slicer and we've got something called show report filter pages. Now, slicers, which I'm going to show you now, you need to have Excel 2010 or later to be able to use. Now, most places where you go and deliver training, to be honest, it's rare that anyone's got a lower version than 2010. But if you've got an older version than 2010, you're not going to have this feature. Um, but here we go. Click into the pivot table, analyze. I go to this one here called insert slicer. Click onto that. Can you see it comes up with the headings of the list? So I'm interested in region, quarter, product, and I'll tick sales in as well. Click OK. So these are buttons, right? And these buttons, what they do, they negate the need for using these drop downs. Now, I've put sales in, even though it's a bit rubbish, right? And I'll show you why in a minute. But the idea of this is if I click on Anise Seeds, can you see it filters the pivot table to Anise Seeds? Now, you can use your shift key or your control key to multi select. So I've gone Anise Seeds, Cassia, and Cloves. I could then, if I zoom out a little bit, 
go for north, south, and central. And I'm interested in quarter one, three, and four. And can you see that's just changed my pivot table totally? So rather than having to faff around with these little pop down arrows, I can just click on these buttons and it gives me, can you see what I want to see in the pivot table? If you want to tick them all, you can click this button. Can you see that brings them all back in? Um, you can use your control or shift key, or if you've got a later version, this I think this button came in in 2013, but if I click into that, what this now does, it turns these into like a sticky click, sort of on, sorry, off, on, on, off. Can you see it kind of retains it? You don't have to use your uh, control key uh, to do that. The reason why I put sales in to show you it's a bit rubbish, can you see it's not giving you the ability to do a between, it's just saying I want all the sales that are that value. So uh, I've never really, never really come across uh, a great use for a slicer for a numeric value, i.e. in the value section. Uh, if you don't want them anymore, click on the edge, delete on the keyboard, click. Can you see that just gets rid of them and you can still use the pop downs if you want. Um, one last thing I'll show you around filters and then I'll come on to answer Heather's question, which is about grouping. Um, if you watch here, uh, click into my pivot table. This next thing does require something to be in the filter section at the top. Uh, what I do is, based on region, being in there, I'm gonna to go to analyze. I go to this section here called options and I pop this little arrow down. It's very faffy to get to this, but it's worthwhile. Pop the arrow down, I've got one there called show report filter pages just here. And what this is gonna do, this is going to split to this pivot table by whatever we've put in that filters uh, box just there. So when I do it, I am gonna end up with, so if I click on to show report filter pages, here we go. Can you see, show all report filter pages of region, that's what's in the filters box. When I click okay, I'm gonna end up with a tab for north, south, east, and west, and there's going to be in that tab, um, a pivot table filtered to north, a pivot table filtered to south, to east, to west. So once I'm ready, click OK, boom, look, north, east, south, west, central. And can you see it's filtered that pivot table to each one? Now, this is really nifty for creating report packs because I can go back to my original pivot table, which is that sheet two. I could get rid of region and plonk it down there, put product in there, and then look, eat, sleep, rave, repeat. Analyze, pop the arrow down, show report filter pages. Can you see now it says product? because that's what I've put in the filters page just there. Once I'm ready, I just click OK. Can you see now North, East, South, West, Central? We've also got, if I just move this across, Annie, Seed, Basil, Leaf, Cassia, Chives, Cloves. So th this is mega quick and easy for creating like uh, report packs if you've got you know particular ways that you wanna split data. Right, so I appreciate your patience, Heather. Let me just get rid of some of this stuff and simplify what I've got in front of me so we can look at your question. So what are we asking here? And while, while I answer, answer this question for Heather, if, if anyone's got any more questions, feel free to answer them, uh, ask them even. Uh, and what I'll do is before we finish off, because I've, I've kind of covered the content that we aimed for, I'll do a little bit of a quick recap of the areas we've covered and just give ch chance for people to ask any questions they want to ask. But here we go. Uh, Heather's asking, is there a way you can group rows, uh, please, if uh, the data is combined in a combined column of dates, can you group them by month? Ah, really, really good question, Heather. So uh, I'm going to have to change my data to show you this. So. I hope I'm right on this, and if I'm wrong, put another bit of text in the chat window, the ch chat window, uh, Heather, and I'll uh, change what I'm saying. But what I think Heather's saying is, let's say uh, that our original data, rather than having one called quarter, had something in there, say, order date. Um, here we go. I'm just going to put some dates into this uh, column. Let's just bash this down. So can you see that I've got a load of dates going through from you know June to um, July through to August, and I've got some for September. Now, if I come along and do my pivot table, and each version handles this a little, tiny, tiny bit differently, uh, but let, let's put in, I'll have uh, product in there, sales in there, and then maybe I want to grab order date and drop it in the column. Now, 
this version that I'm currently in, this has automatically grouped these dates. Can you see into June, July, and August? Slightly older versions, because what it's done is recognize the fact that it's a date. Slightly older versions, you'll just get, I'll pop this open. Can you see there's every individual date appearing there? Now, what you have to do, and you can do this in this version anyway, right click on it. Can you see there's one there called group? And because it's a date, can you see it recognizes? We get a start and an end date for how we want to sort of display these dates. But can you see we could decide how we want to group this? So I could say, I would like to group it by uh, quarters. If I now click OK, can you see quarter two, quarter three? So if I right click on this and click on group, can you see it goes back to being the individual dates? And again, if I want to group it by something else, right click on the date, go on to group. Maybe I want to do it by month and uh, year. Once I'm ready, click OK. Can you see 2018? Then it's got the months going down there. Now, a couple of little caveats. And, and look, cleverly, can you see 2018 total as well? So if we had like 2017, uh, 2016 data, it will give you the total for that as well. Um, but little caveat to this. This will work on the basis that you have entered your date into Excel in a particular format. Look day day slash month month slash year 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 format i mean there are other formats it'll accept but that to be honest is the one i would suggest you go for if you type dates in like this as an example wait there uh, with dots excel does not recognize that as a date and it will not do this clever grouping for you also if for instance part way down your order date column You've got something like that. Some versions, I have noticed, this will bodge up the grouping. So your data needs to be fairly clean. It needs to be a date for it to pick that up. But you can group your data. Now, look, Heather, I'm gonna, I think that's what you're asking. I'm going to mark that as answered. If it's not quite right, let me know. Just put a question in there, and I'll come back to you. Got one more question. Uh, oh, brilliant. Thanks, Heather. Thanks for letting me know. Got one more question from Mark, and then I'll do a bit of a recap. Uh, how easy is it to create a chart of the data? Ah, mega easy. Let me go to the uh, pivot table here. I'm just going to uh, make this pivot table a bit simpler. Let's just bung in product and region there. So, any pivot table you do, uh, click into the list, into the pivot table, go to analyze, click on to pivot chart just there, and it'll pop this up. Now look, there's a whole raft of stuff around graphs that you're either going to know or not. I'll just assume that you know, roughly speaking, graphs. But what we do, we pick the type of graph you want to go for, be it a clustered, a stacked, or a 100% stacked graph, or line, or pie, or bar, whatever you want to go for. Click onto it, press OK, there's your graph. Now the really cool thing about graphs, Mark, is uh, once you've done it based on the pivot table, the terminology of these boxes changes. That used to be row, that used to be column, and obviously that's still values. This is now axis, this is now legend, and again, still values. So axis is the X axis, right? And legend, can you see there, is this key on the right. So we can move this, look, we can just drag and drop. Can you see there? Move this around. Can you see it changes the graph? So if I put region in the axis, can you see region appears down there? If I put quarter in the legend, can you see quarter appears there? We can also put multiple items, can you see, to subdivide it out. Nice one. Thanks for asking that, Mark. I hope that answers your question. So just to recap, it's just click in there, analyze, pivot chart, pick the type of chart you want to go for, click OK. Jobs are good in. Right, one more question. Um, I, I don't know the name. They've kept the name um, anonymous, uh, but let's have a look at this. I'm just going to mark that as uh, answered, uh, Mark. Oh, nice one. Thanks for letting me know. Um, can you automatically update the data source to incorporate additional data added, or does it need refreshing each time? Right, okay. So, um, little thing about a pivot table if the data changes and i didn't really make light of this so let's just change the region of one of these lines to be i don't know manchester let's put liverpool and let's add sunny derby into the mix as well so if i go back and this could be new lines being added as well and um, if i go back to the pivot table can you see 
Manchester, Derby, Liverpool aren't in there. So normal run of thing with a pivot table is any changes don't come through unless you refresh. Now, if I right click on there and go to, uh, here we go, refresh, can you see Manchester, Liverpool, Derby appear? So it's not continually refreshing, but you can refresh it whenever you want. Now, there's a couple of things here. And I'm probably going to look a bit of a plank while I hunt for the option because I'm pretty sure there is an option. So there's two things really. You've got, you want to be able to refresh the data automatically or maybe on a schedule might be good enough after a few minutes. And also what happens if more data gets added, you want to pick that data up. So let's talk about refreshing the data. That's the first point. If I go to analyze, go to options, okay, and... If I can't find this now, I will hunt it down and um, send you it. There is a way of getting it to do it. If there isn't, we can do a macro for this to get it to refresh. Yeah, I'm looking like a bit of a plank here. So I tell you what, that, that part, let me leave that and I'll come back to you via email after the, after the session. Um, but let me show you something you can do which enables you to pick up any new data that comes into the pivot table. So here's a thing that can be quite useful uh, when you're talking about your source data. Instead of when you do your pivot table, base it just on a list like this, what we can do is if we highlight over, can you see the data? Before we do a pivot table, if we go to home and then go to format as table, what this is, format table is kind of a way of tagging a list. So I, I come along and pick one of these and it's quite good because it gives you formatting. You see it's like color coded the rows, it's added filters on. But the idea of format table is um, it's tagging a list and you can call this something like a sales list. But also if you add more stuff onto the end, can you see it automatically picks up you know, the new item. So th this list could actually form the basis of a pivot table. Now, if I click inside the list that I've formatted as a table, go to table tools design, there's a couple of things here. Can you see we've got over here table name? So first of all, it's quite good. It's a bit like a named range. I could uh, come in here and call this one sales, for instance. But next to that, can you see I've got one there that's called uh, summarize with pivot table. Now, once I'm ready, if I click onto that, can you see now rather than a range, it comes up saying select a table or range and the table or range is sales. It's the same kind of thing, but the idea of this is if anything gets added to the bottom of the, um, the formatted table in here, rather than you having to like change the area that the pivot table is looking at, it will pick it up. So it's not automatically refreshing, that's the bit that I'll come back via email. But what it is doing, any new data that gets added in, that pivot table will just munch it up rather than you having to, you know, um, change the area that you're looking for. Now, apologies, I, 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 there will be a way of getting it to automatically refresh. I'm, I'm sure there's a schedule that you can set. If there isn't, I might be thinking of something else, actually. If there isn't, I'll um, give you the rough steps of how to do a, a macro to, to sort of do this as well. Um, so cheers for your question. Uh, one more coming from Pos. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do a um, a, re a, a recap and finish the session in a moment. Um, very first ten minutes after the webinar. Right, Pos. Um, so the first ten minutes of the webinar you've missed. Not a problem. This has been recorded. I'll stick the recording on YouTube on our blog, and everyone who was registered for the web webinar will get a link to that recording, so you can watch it. You know, cup of tea, biscuit later on, chill out, and uh, you know, watch all of the webinar. I'll also send you a cheat sheet with the um, you know with some tips and tricks that we've gone through as well. Right, so I'm going to wrap up now. Um, Appreciate you all staying as long as you have. I know I've kind of uh, gone a little bit longer than I thought I would. Uh, we've gone up for 40 minutes rather than um, 30 minutes, which I advertised. But here we go. Uh, what we've talked about is a practical way of understanding how pivot tables uh, work. Uh, you know, sort of talking about what the various row and column bit and the value sections are. We've looked at maths um, in there, so we've looked at how we change the different types of calculations. 
And we've, I hope I've kind of shown you that filters can be your friend within a pivot table. It's really quite a nifty way of kind of slicing and dicing and messing around. Uh, look, really appreciate your, your time, everyone. Uh, again, last little plug, and I said I will not but last little plug while I've got you. Do remember we can do this kind of training bespoke for your company as a webinar, up to 100 people, custom content. And we can also come to your office and deliver a training session for up to eight people, bring laptops, customize the sessions and you know, cover what you need. But thank you very much for your time and have a really great day.